Hello and welcome to Polycousin. My name is Christina and today we're going to take a little bit of a break from concept creation and cover an exclusive add-on made by the brilliant Unreal Sensei. The add-on itself is a simple script he wrote that kind of batch exports models from Blender intended for Unreal Engine 5 at the click of a button. If you export them directly into the Unreal content folder, you can make any changes to the models in Blender, hit the export button again, and then refresh the static mesh in Unreal for an almost real-time experience. I'll also be covering how to batch export separate meshes and bring all of these meshes into Unreal, how to group meshes in Unreal, how to export combined meshes, so I'll import as just one big mesh, and how I use this add-on in my personal workflow when working on a scene for a book cover illustration. All right, let's get started. So first off, I just wanted to thank Zach from Unreal Sensei for giving me exclusive rights to publish the add-on for free via the Polycosm Gumroad page. If you haven't heard of Unreal Sensei, which I mean, why haven't you? <laughs> it's a brilliant YouTube channel that covers all sorts of Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorials. And Zach has also launched an in-depth course covering way more topics than what you see on the channel. The course is actually how I started with my UE5 journey as a replacement for Blender's render engine, Eevee. If you guys are interested, I'll link both the YouTube channel and the course in the description and pinned comment below. Alright, so let's get into the add-on. Installation is super simple. You just go to the add-on panel via preferences and install the PI file, as in PY file. <laughs> Make sure the box is ticked and save your preferences. In your viewport, bring up the side menu with N and you should see an export selected panel. First of all, you need to choose a directory to export to. I usually export it to the content folder of the Unreal Engine 5 project I've just started. In Unreal, you can just create a new folder and that should show up in the content folder. Okay, so now this is super important. When choosing a directory, make sure that you uncheck relative path and to do that, press the cogwheel and just uncheck it. Done. When exporting, the FBX files will be named after the names you have in the outliner, so name them wisely. You can choose to either export separate or combined. And what that means is, let's say you have a bunch of meshes that kind of make up the outfit of this model I've imported into Blender. You can either choose to export separately, which means when imported into the engine, they all come in relative to their position in Blender, but as separate meshes. That way you can move, rotate, scale each mesh independent of each other. Or you can choose combine, which means they'll all be combined into one big mesh and you can't flexibly move the meshes independent of each other. But what if you want to export meshes, but you don't want their relative positions to be the same as in Blender? What I mean by that is, instead of rotating or moving the mesh from the world origin pivot point, which is being generated in the middle of the scene, which I mean admittedly makes it hard to manipulate the mesh, you can hit the export objects origin button, which sort of resets the pivot point to where we have it in Blender. Although for this to work, you need to be using the export combine button. That way you can model anything anywhere in the scene and the pivot point will always be matched to the model itself and not the world origin. Or alternatively, let's just say that you use the export separate function, but you want to change the pivot point in Unreal. Choose the mesh that has an offset pivot point and with the middle mouse button, grab the white ball and with Alt V, you can kind of snap it to a vertice. Now right click the mesh and press pivot, set as pivot offset. If you don't do the last step, the pivot point will just jump back to where it was. It's, it's sort of like a momentary adjustment. I also mentioned that it's super easy to update meshes once you make changes to it in Blender. Let's say that I didn't like the look of this mesh and wanted to make some new adjustments. I just select that mesh, hit export separate, and seeing how I've exported it to the content folder with the same name still, in Unreal I can just right click and hit re-import. <laughs> yep, it's that easy. 
You might be asking about textures, like do they import too? Well, I mean, some of them do if the texture map is directly connected to its corresponding input, like this. I think the albedo and roughness usually gets imported in, but none of the others for some weird reason. Just make sure that you have your import settings set to create new material, and this will save you a few clicks. If you have other things in there, like a color ramp or a hue saturation node, it just won't import at all. But, I mean, if you'd like to solve this problem and simplify the node setup into just one map for each input, I highly recommend the Simple Bake add-on, which I've covered in this video. You basically just choose the copy objects and apply bakes option, and it just simplifies the entire process. So how does this simple but handy little add-on fit into my workflow? As I've talked about before on this channel, I used to use Blender for my 3D renders that I would later paint over in Photoshop, but have for the past few months actually switched over to Unreal Engine 5, and seeing how I still design a lot of my scenes and characters in Blender, having a handy little add-on like this is crucial on saving me time. Instead of having to export each individual mesh, rename it, and so on, I can just use one button for everything and it's just seriously so super fast. I also just wanted to include a bonus tip for any of you peeps working with metahumans. I plan to do a full video on how I pose them in Unreal, but for now I just wanted to touch on how to export them from Unreal so you can custom design and dress them up in Blender. In Unreal, make sure that you convert the rig into a static mesh while it's posed. Right-click that newly created static mesh in the content browser. Then through Asset Actions, hit Export. Now I import that model into Blender. Choose the level of detail I want and just delete the rest. I usually do some like cloth sims and add armor and clothing as I see fit and use the batch export options to get all of these models into Unreal while keeping their relative position. So when I drag them all into the scene, they all kind of come out like this. Then I can hit Ctrl G to group these assets and then copy the location of the model if it's off centered. If you want to manipulate individual pieces, you can right click the group, hit unlock and just move scale rotate it around before locking it again. This is usually how I go about creating clothing and such for the metahuman models. And if you're curious how this one turned out, this is the 3D draft, and here's my paint over. Actually Quixel Official reposted my work on Instagram the other day and that was just so freaking cool. <laughs> And that's about it. Again, the add-on is available for free on Gumroad and links to that and the Unreal Sensei YouTube and Masterclass will be in the description and pinned comment below. Make sure to send Zach some love for making such a handy little add-on and releasing it for free. Ooh, that was a lot of information. As you guys saw in our previous video, we've gotten a five month old puppy and she's quite the handful. She's definitely keeping us quite busy, so apologies if there are any delays with future videos. Thanks so much for watching guys, bye!